well as the collegiate record. And this is going to get a big shout out from these people in this crowd. Makai Williams, their sophomore sprinter, the, the collegiate leader this year in the 100 meters. Yeah, you got Makai Williams here, 986, right? He got bronze in this event last year. He is the fastest American, and they call him the Quad God. That's a heck of a nickname. Matthew Bowling, the sophomore from Georgia, just gets better at the 100 meter distance, ran 998 this year. Number three time in the country. Georgia knows what it's doing. They know they had to go down to Houston, Texas, and find those real athletes <laughs> in the big state of Texas, you know? Well, Bowling lightened up his outdoor season. He long jumped indoors as well as running the 60 and the 200. But here he doesn't long jump in most of the outdoor season, but we find him in both relays. So busy weekend for Bowling. One, two, four by one, and four by four. Same qualifying in the hurdle. Or top two advancing automatically. Makai Williams in the middle, Joseph Fonbele left in the blocks. Bowling's got some work to do if he wants to get in those top two. Here comes Fonbele, and it's Makai Williams and Joseph Fonbele with that amazing finish. Who gets the second spot? Williams 10.03, Fonbele 10.11, Bowling 10.18. So we need to keep an eye on that because Bowling is going to be looking at hoping to make it on a time qualifier. That was into a .6 meter per second win for Williams. Mm, mm, mm. Joseph Fonbele didn't win the race, but I think he might have won over the crowd, and that's hard to do with Michael Williams being there, who's built like a, a bulldog and has a very great start. But you see here, I call him Mr. Closing Speed. He's just high-stepping, high-stepping, trying to find his way. Five more meters, and he might have been able to get it done, but that's why he's so great at the 200. Well, Makai Williams, we were told earlier in the week Robert Johnson wanted to show people that you can live in the Pacific Northwest and you can run fast, and he certainly is doing that. And Joseph Fambula, I had a chance to talk to Mike Holloway, said, do you coach him differently? And he said, absolutely. He's a different type of an athlete. Really had to get him to, away from standing up at the start, being able to push in the first 30 meters, which would put him in a better position to, to use that come from behind. Yes, yes. Sleeper to me in this whole field. He ran 9.94, wind legal last year, and he's gotten down to 10.05 this year as he ran at the prelims and regionals, uh, at regionals, and he's the ACC champion in the 200 meters. Watch out for him in this race. We didn't see him run that much indoors. I get a chance to talk to Ricky Argro tonight. We'll see if Jovan can get through, but this is only his third open 100 meters of the season. He'll be in lane two, out in lane five, Ishmael Cohn, the sophomore from New Orleans. He'll all see, be, all, we'll also see him in the 200. Yes, Ishmael Cohn, he's a transfer from UT Arlington, and he's the back-to-back -back, uh, NCAAs, you know, looking to make more of an impact this time around as he finished 21st in this event last year. But coming into this, he's the Southland Conference champ in the 100 and the 200-meter dash, and he also has really nice earrings. Well, he's gone 10 flat, windy. And I'll tell you what, I don't care if it's windy or not. Ten flat is fast. Did everybody see the race? <laughs> then it counted. Somebody else to look, somebody else to look at, this, uh, at this heat as well is uh, Adudo, Adodi, excuse me, Anzurike from Stanford and Sean Maswagani of Houston. This, this uh, heat is really loaded. The freshman from Stanford has just been absolutely on fire all season long. For those who are asking why we have three semifinals, it's 24 total athletes in every event, 12 from the West Regional, 12 from the East Regional, and those are the, the heats in the quarterfinals. These are the semifinals, and the only way to get it done in two races is to have three semifinals. That's why it works this way, which makes the premium on the top two finishers much, much more of something that these people are really looking forward to. To get third in these early heats is very, very tough. Martin with a good start on the inside in lane two, but right next to him, Dedrick Vanover of Florida moving well. And in lane eight, it's Maswagani of Houston who's going to win the semi. Ooh, close between Ooh. he and Martin. Martin might have just leaned him at the tape. He did. 10-10 for Javon Martin of Florida State. And they're waiting on the second place finisher. Mm. Dedrick Vanover of Florida gets that second automatic qualifier. They had a 1.2 meter per second win behind him, about two and a half miles per hour. And very close behind was Sean Maswagani. Ended up third on a few thousandths of a second. And 10-15, I think he's got a pretty good chance of advancing with a 10-15. Yeah, you see it. Look, all these guys are separated by 0.2 hundredths of a second. 
and they coming across basically in a straight line. So I talked about it before the race. Jovan Martin from Florida State, he's a sleeper. He's in there in lane two. No one's really paying attention to him, but he's got one of the fastest times. All these guys are just trying to hold on, hold on, hold on for those last 20 meters, and whoever holds on to their speed the best is who won the race. Well, Jovan Martin looks like he's held together by KT tape. <laughs> you know, Sean, Sean Maswagani was, was the guy that uh, was, was my sleeper. There you see the times. Look at that. 10.146, 10.149. That's how close second and third place were. 1018. So if the third placer runs faster than 1018 in this next race, Matthew Bowling will not be contesting the 100 meter final. Have to focus on the 200 instead. We are now ready for that third semifinal. You guys getting their last little warm ups in, and this semifinal features the freshman from Nigeria and Tennessee, Favor Ashe. Yes, Favor Ashe from Nigeria ran 10.04 this year to win the SEC championships. He's also run 9.79 this year, although it wasn't win legal, but like we said, if everybody saw it, it counted. And if you can run that fast with the win, it's just a precursor to show you what you can run without it. So look for him. He got third at 60 this year uh, at NCAA's indoor. He's going to be uh, someone to deal with, and I also love the fact that he's got that blonde, blonde spiked hair there. That's pretty awesome. Well, he learned a lot from his indoor NCAA competition he false started the sec championships but indoors all kinds of commotion and everything and even outdoors in the 100 meters at the sec championships the the, the rule ken hard and the coach of tennessee said the rule don't false start same goes for here do not false start and the youngster had to learn the hard way at the sec championships but i think he has learned that lesson but he ran outstanding at those sec championships and then he followed it up with an with a really good regional time there's Alaba Incontola from Middle Tennessee State. And how many times you get to the NCAA championships and you see these athletes from Middle Tennessee State come in here running really, really fast. 10.04 at Conference USA Outdoor Championships. Yeah, he won that, the Conference USA Championships in the 100 and the 200 meters. So everyone that you see lined up in these races is a champion in their own right, some way, somehow. It's just a matter of what do they put down on the track today? A couple of Nigerian sprinters in this semifinal with Ashe in seven from Tennessee and Akintola in lane four from Middle Tennessee. And Dwight also want to point out Javante Hardy there in lane five. North Carolina a and He got 10th last year in 100, but he's the indoor 200 meter champion uh, as he upset Matthew Bolin, who kind of stumbled off the last turn uh, earlier this year. He's also a guy that, uh, you know, he's got the glasses on. He's feeling swaggy right now. He, uh, he's a guy that to watch out for in this race. Micaiah Harris as well from Texas on the outside, lane eight. He is going to, if he can get through, he'll really help Texas, Texas's team title chances. So remember the bubble time, 10-18. If you don't finish first or second, you better run faster than that if you want to run again on Friday. I was just checking the age for Micaiah Harris, and I'm like, he's got to be. He's been in college for a long time. <laughs> 23, he's ready to roll. Got football player on the outside there. A chain from Texas A&M. Yes, exactly. Football players know how to run, too. Oh, the recall gun. Ashe had gotten a very good start. I didn't think it was too good. And in fact, I didn't really see anything that was obvious. So we will find out if we see a yellow card or a red card or a green card. Let's see if we can pick something up here. Mm. Mm, I really didn't see any movement. Yeah. Did you guys? A, a ah. slight, that's a very slight movement by Lawrence Johnson from Wisconsin there, and the all red in the in the inside, but nothing, in my opinion, that would that would cause a cause a recall gun. So they are checking the equipment to see if it's a green, a yellow, or a red. It's a green card. <sighs> everyone can take a deep <laughs> breath, but everyone has a start on their legs. Yes. Yeah, so